to the wisdom given unto him. Meaning that the wisdom of brother Paul was wisdom in salvation. The entire writings of brother Paul, all the epistles of Paul, which is actually about 75%, if not 80% of the New Testament, is salvation. The long suffering of our God is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, meaning that the wisdom given to brother Paul was the wisdom of salvation. No wonder when Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. Read for me. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So Paul told Timothy that the entire scriptures are able to make thee wise. Wise unto salvation. So you see, salvation is the crux of the matter. Like I said last Sunday, before you define a denomination, you must first of all find out what do they understand about salvation. It is the understanding of salvation that defines a church, a ministry, or a denomination. When a denomination has not understood salvation, that denomination self doesn't even know why it is, it is gathering. Because the crux of the matter is salvation. And I'm not talking about altar call. Salvation is bigger than altar call. That's the entire subject of scripture. Remember, it says the holy scriptures which are able, the entire scriptures, meaning Genesis to Malachi. Because we know that Genesis to Malachi is the scripture or the Old Testament or Jesus concealed. And it says Genesis to Malachi is able to make you wise unto salvation. That's the entire mission of the whole Bible. The writings of Paul, salvation. Genesis to Malachi, salvation. The whole Bible, salvation. That's the crux of the matter. So a believer that does not understand salvation doesn't even know why he's called a believer. And it is very possible that he's not a believer. It's very possible he's not a believer. He's just wearing a title that is not validated. Because salvation is very key. Read for me Luke chapter 4 verse number 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now, that was not a lie. That was not a lie. And Satan was not trying to say what was not true. That was true. Satan became the God of this world by Adam's transgression. Adam transgressed and handed over to Satan the authority and dominion that was given to him in the beginning. That's why Satan now said to Jesus, for it was delivered unto me. That means I am in possession of it. And whosoever I will, I will give it. Brother Paul acknowledged that when he was teaching in the epistles, he gave us that information. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, he says, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world. So Satan became the God of this world by the transgression of Adam. Adam's transgression made Satan the God of this world. Now, the transgression of Adam was to hand over the world to Satan by obedience. He handed over the world to Satan by obedience. He obeyed Satan. And that act of obedience between Adam and Lucifer made Lucifer Satan, made Lucifer Satan, the God of this world, and made Adam a sinner, or made Adam dead. Remember, the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Death there is not extinction. Death there is separation. Because even after he died, he was still moving. He was still walking around. So it wasn't extinction. It was separation. That was the death. He was separated from God and connected to Satan. So Satan became his God. Or Satan became his Lord. That's the fall. That's the fall. And then Satan actually took dominion over everything including Including the angels. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 8. Now we see it clearly put by the writer of Hebrews. 
Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Talking about man, so that you know it's man we're dealing with. Let's get back to context, verse 6. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? 7. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he puts all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under but him. But now we see not yet all things under his feet. Why don't we see all things under his feet? Because he handed over to Satan. He handed over to Satan. So even though he was supposed to be in charge, we do not see man in charge. Why? He handed over to Satan. And Satan bragged about it. He said to Jesus, it was delivered to me. And whomsoever I want, I give it to. Now, if Satan was lying, it wouldn't be a temptation. The reason why it is a temptation is because what Satan was saying was not a lie. It was true. And that is what Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted to get the, the world back. He wanted to get all of man back to God. That was a mission. And Satan said, I have them in my hand. And I will give it to anybody. And if you want man, bow down and worship me. That's temptation. Because it was true. Adam committed treason. And gave to Satan by obedience. He obeyed Satan. Hallelujah. So Satan qualified to be the God of this world by transgression. By the transgression of Adam. Now the next question I want to ask is, when was hell created? If God never intended for man to go to hell and God didn't create Satan... And God didn't create sin. Then when was hellfire created? Well, hell was created when time began. Hell was not there before time. Because there was nothing before time. It was toho boho. Nothing, nothing. So it was with time when creation took place. And God gave Adam a choice. With that choice came both the blessing and the consequences of disobeying the choice. That's where hell was created. So hell was created in time. Just like man was created in time. Just like angels were created in time. But of course we establish that God has been before time. He created time. Matthew 25 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So everlasting fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. Where did we see the devil and his angels when Adam committed treason? It was the transgression of Adam that turned Lucifer to Satan. And the angels that followed Lucifer became demons. So at that point, hell was prepared for Satan and his angels. Are we together here? Hell was not prepared for man. It was prepared for Satan and his angels. The only man that will accompany Satan and his angels to hell is the man who rejects the gospel of Christ. Because a man that rejects the gospel of Christ has joined affinity with the devil. Therefore, where his master is, there he shall be also. Those angels were no more God's angels. They became demons. In Jude verse 6, read for me. And the angels which kept not their first estate. So the angels kept not their first estate. What was their first estate? Angels. What was their assignment in their first estate? Ministering spirits sent forth to minister for man. So in what way did they leave their first estate? When they left their place of receiving instruction from man, of receiving direction from man to serve and began to give instructions. That act was them leaving their first estate. 
They left their original place and assume a place that was not theirs. All right, read on for me. The angels who left their first estate. But left their own habitation. Yes. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. They are chained. They are changed and kept unto the great day. The fall of man, therefore, is the rise of the devil. The fall of man is the rise of the devil. The rise of the devil is the fall of Lucifer. The fall of man is the rise of the devil. The rise of the devil is the fall of Lucifer. So, the falling state of man happens simultaneously with the fall of man. Okay? The fall of man is the rise of the devil. The rise of the devil is the fall of Lucifer. There are no hidden mysteries. That's exactly what happened. The fall of man produced the devil. The manifestation of Satan was the fall of Lucifer. It's as easy as that. There are no, there are no complications. It's very straightforward. Amen. So there in the garden, he deceived Eve and Adam transgressed. Why is it called transgression? It is called transgression because Adam took the authority that God gave him and cheaply handed it over. In fact, Pastor Praise, you know, the, the amazing thing here is that Lucifer and Adam didn't fight. It's not as if Lucifer engaged Adam in a fight and collected the authority. That's why it's transgression. It was just cheap. Eat, you shall not die. And Adam said, yes sir. He ate. No fight. That exchange. It means Adam willingly, consciously, knowledgeably, and deliberately, intentionally, eh? and joyfully, handed over. That's why it's transgression. That's why the Bible says, Eve was not deceived, but the man in the transgression. Praise the Lord. The man where? In the transgression. Praise the Lord. The man in the transgression. Adam transgressed, gave the authority to Lucifer. Now, follow me carefully. Genesis chapter 3 and chapter 2 it's not like 24 hours. It was not like God told Adam the day you eat you shall die. Then tomorrow Adam ate. No. There was, there was time. It was over a long period of time. It's not bam bam. No. There was time. This happened over a period of time. And when that happened humanity was found in sin. Under the authority of Satan. And that was what brought about the manifestation of the plan to save. Okay? Even though man was not yet saved. But there was a plan. So Satan existed when time began. And God created man to be in charge of everything. Including angels. Alright? Now please listen carefully. God did not pre-plan Satan. Satan was not pre-planned by God. Two. God did not send Satan to tempt the created man. God did not send Satan to tempt Adam. God created everything good, including Lucifer. But Lucifer left his estate as an angel and gave instructions. How do we know that angels were not supposed to give instructions? We have read Hebrews 1.14. Look at Psalm 103 verse 20 for me. Bless the Lord, ye his angels. Yes. That excel in strength. That excel in strength. That do his commandments. Their job is to do his commandments. Hearkening unto the voice and of And to his hearken word. to the voice of his word. Their job is not to give instructions. Their job is to do his commandments. Their job is to hearken. That was their job. To minister to man. To minister for us of salvation. To hearken. And to do his commandments. But they left their estate. See? 
they left their estate. Bless the Lord, he is angels. That's why people who worship angels are just, they are just a bunch of illiterates. Angels are servants. Angels are not supposed to be worshipped. Angels are supposed to worship the sun. Because the sun is a man. Angels were created for man. Somebody shout hallelujah. So Satan never existed before time began. But God before time. Satan after time. Man began with time. So listen. God before time. Man with time. Satan after time. Meaning that man is older than Satan. Man was before Satan. Teach him? Yes. Man began with time. Genesis 1, 26, let us make man. Chapter 2, God created man. I mean, God formed man of the dust of the ground. Thank you, Lord. But there's a scripture you read all the time that I need to quickly clarify. It says the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. Well, that was in God. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world in God. It was not an event. That was the plan in God for the salvation of man. Do you understand? Because the actual manifestation of that plan in God took effect 2,000 years ago. So it was in God that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Meaning that the death of Jesus was not an afterthought. It was the plan. That is to say redemption, salvation was going to come to man through the sacrifice of Christ. So it was already in the plan. It was not like God say, oh, man has fallen. Let me say, I can remedy man. No, it was already in God's plan, in God's thought before the world began. Why? Because of God's foreknowledge. We will soon get there. So Adam's transgression led to the dominion of Satan. That dominion belongs to man. So in Genesis 1.26, we see a bestowal of authority. God says, let make man. Let them have dominion. A bestowal of authority on man. In Genesis 3 verse 6 to 7, we see a transfer of authority. A transfer of authority. Then in Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, there is a stripping of that authority. Colossians 2.14 Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way. He didn't keep it by the side. He took it out. Next verse. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He made a show of them openly. Okay? Now follow. Satan began to rule and reign in humanity by sin. Satan began to rule and reign in humanity by sin. Satan began to rule and reign in humanity by sin. So the question will be, what is sin? Sin is disobedience. Sin is disobedience. Satan reigned. Things didn't go according to God's plan until Jesus came. So, by the obedience of one, Jesus, in whom there was no guile, Jesus didn't do anything contrary to the father. He went about saying, I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, that I do. I cannot go against the wish of my father. 
But Adam, Adam acted out of God's plan. That's why it's called disobedience. That's why it is called transgression. That's why the second Adam, who was equally a man, fulfilled what the first Adam failed to fulfill. He obeyed. That is why by one man's disobedience, then you now see by one man's obedience, I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, that I do. If I see my father heal, I heal. If I see my father raise the dead, I raise the dead. My father never kills, I don't kill. So somebody says, what about pastors that pray for people to die and they die? They are in cooperation with Satan. Yes, sir. Clean and direct, even if they are watching. Do you realize that even when there was an accidental discharge, you know accidental discharge, you know when you have a gun, they have what they call accidental discharge. When mistakenly the bullet is released. When there was accidental discharge, Jesus fixed it. You know what the accidental discharge was? When Peter, piap, chop off the ear of somebody, just wait, 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 wait. My father doesn't remove people's ears. Poop, he put it back to correct the record. That we are not here to tamper with human health. We are here to restore health. My father does not kill. So when a man prays for people to die and they're dying, who is answering his prayer? For the thief commit not to kill? Exactly. So when you and Satan form a coalition, is that the right English? Form what? A coalition. Okay, so two of you are an agency in killing, stealing, and destroying. He said, I know myself. Don't try me. I'm a man of God. I'm anointed with oil. If you try me, you'll die in the afternoon. No, that is not the way the father functions. He said, but I am come that you may have what? That you may have life and that you may have it how? Abundantly. That's what my father does. That's what I do. My father will heal the sick. I heal the sick. My father will raise the dead. I raise the dead. My father will cleanse the lepers. I cleanse the lepers. My father will forgive sinners. I forgive sinners. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, that I do. Why? Because Jesus is the father manifest. Jesus is the father manifest. How do we know that? He said, I am my father. I want, meaning I am the physical expression of the father. So when you see me physically in operation, exactly what you see is exactly what the father is operating like. What about churches where they pray for people to fall and die? It's an agency of Satan. Because the father doesn't want anybody to perish. But that all native doctor, witches and wizards, evil people, that all. Didn't he say, I have no delight in the death of the wicked? So why should a pastor be praying for people to die? When he should be getting people saved. That reveals who the pastor is. Is working for. Whoever you are working for. You must do what he does. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my boss does. I do. Teaching good. Please sit down. Let's go on. So Jesus is the father manifest. Or Jesus is God who became a man. Or Jesus is God in human flesh. So that humanity will know how to relate with God. So Jesus was God that became a man. How do we prove that? Jesus slept. God does not sleep. He that watcheth over Israel does not sleep nor slumber. So for Jesus to sleep, 
means Jesus was a man. Okay? He ate. God doesn't eat. God said, if I want food, I will not come to you. But Jesus ate our food. Jesus was tired. Why? He's a man. Jesus was tempted. Why? He was man. Jesus suffered. Why? He was a man. Okay? Are you still here? He's a man. So, Jesus is God who became what? A man. 100% man. And because he was a man, he could have disobeyed the father. It wasn't automatic that he would obey the father. So, it's not as if it was pre-planned for Jesus to obey the father. No, nothing like that. Everything happened in real time. Everything happened in real time. That is what, what Jesus did is called obedience. He obeyed. Adam disobeyed. Jesus was like Adam. First Adam, second Adam. Jesus could have chosen to disobey the father. After all, in the garden of Gethsemane, it almost got there. Father, I don't want the cup. Because he's a free moral agent. I don't want the cup. Why? He has a will. He has choice. Father, I let this cup pass. I don't want it. That's his will. Okay? Nevertheless. So now, even though he has the freedom to do what he wants, he brought his will in subjection to God's will. It is called obedience. Now, that alignment that alignment is what made salvation available. He said, not as I will. That is, this is not what I want. But I submit to your will. So it was not like Jesus was just acting. It wasn't acting. It was real. It was real. That's why nobody should make caricature of your salvation. Look, salvation is free, but it's expensive. It costs somebody. That you are not feeling it doesn't mean it's not real. It's real. That's the reality of redemption. First Adam, second Adam, last Adam. First Adam, Second Adam, last Adam. Now, what is first Adam? What is second Adam? What is last Adam? They are not the same. So what is first Adam? First Adam is Adam. The progenitor of the human race. What is second Adam? Second Adam is Jesus, the incarnate Christ. What is last Adam? The last Adam is Jesus the Prototokos. The Prototokos or the prototype. The firstborn. The progenitor of the sons. We are not sons after the manner of the second Adam. None of us is incarnate. Only Jesus is incarnate. But there was need for the second Adam. If there will be a last Adam. Meaning that the last Adam is all of us. We are the last Adam. After us there is no other Adam. We are the best of God's best. The best of God's best. That's who we are. We are God's choices. Choices, prized possession. Choices, prized possession. We are not just, uh, we are not just born again. It is deeper than just born again. We are the amalgamation of immortality in mortality. 
We are the marriage of deity in humanity. Are you here? We are the union of God and man in a body called human body. So when you move, people are looking at you. They think it's a human being. No. No. That is why it is a mystery that a man is housing God. And that when he moves, everything that makes God, God moves on his inside. Shato labayana. Zibarakotana. Mandolo borokote. Rege dege bajoga. Libarakote nege. What cannot operate inside God, I command it to expire inside you. Mento latana. Jajo, jojo, jojo, jojo. Somebody shout, I have immortality in my mortality. It's a mystery that man houses eternal life. You know what eternal life is? Eternal life is God. That word eternal life is God. It's another name for God. Oh, 1 John 5.20 and we know that the son of God is come. Say we know. Yes. Touch your neighbor, say knowledge. knowledge. Say to your neighbor, the kingdom, the kingdom. thrives Thrive. on knowledge, Thrive. not feelings. So ignorance, so ignorance is your own doing in this kingdom. And we know. And we know. Not we think. And we know. Not we feel. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. We know. That the communication of your faith may be effectual through the acknowledging, the epignosis. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know. Kimanangote. There is zero tolerance in the kingdom for illiteracy. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. That is, it cannot be accommodated. God is a God of knowledge. Imitate your father. Read on. We know that the son of God is come. And has given us an understanding. So now we know that the son of God is come. And the next thing he did as he came. Is to give us an understanding. Read on. That we may know him that is true. That we may know him. Not that we may know about him. That we may know him. Not about him. There must be. Kebatona. You and Jesus. Jesus must see face to face. This is not CRK. And we know him. Not that we know about him. We know him that is true. Who is true? John 17 3. We will come back to first John. And this is life eternal. Yes. That they might know thee, the only true God. The only true God. And we know him that is true. Who is he that is true? He is the only true God. Now, who is the only true God? Read on. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Which is Jesus Christ. The only true God is Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know the only true God. Outside Jesus, there is no God. The only, not one of the true gods. The only true God, which is Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. 
Who is the only true God? Jesus Christ. So get back to 1 John 5 20. Read for me. The true God. And have given us an understanding. Yes. That we may know him that is true. That is true. And we are in him that is true. Command to Leanda. We are in him that is true. So we don't come to his presence. We carry his presence. Because we are in him. We don't seek his presence. We live in his presence. Why? We are in him. What cannot fight him cannot fight us. Why? We are. Am I teaching here? Okay. We are in him that is true. Read on. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. Now, that him that is true, his name is Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? This is the true God. Jesus Christ is the true God. What is another name for Jesus Christ? Exactly. So when you have eternal life, what do you have? Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus Christ, what do you have? The only true God. Do you have eternal life? What do you have? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? So, can God be sick? Can God be poor? Can God be frustrated? Batalayana. Jejula nega. Breye korada. Bola tobala. Egegeya no kaka. Broyakele negaga. Whatever does not look like God in your life, I command it to be flushed out. Flush out. Flush out. Flush out. Flush out. out. Whatever is responsible for those swollen legs, I command you to be corrected. Legs be normal. Everything swollen. Swollen heart. Swollen liver. Swollen kidneys. Fibroids. Tumors. As your amen is coming like thunder, I command you to melt out. Melt, 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 melt. Lift your hands. Say, I have immortality in my mortality. Say, I house eternal life. I cannot be sick. Please sit down. Nikatu la nanga. Zula munge ninga nga ndosh. Ila kura non santinga. Mombro ndangi nango ndongi nyanga ndonga nyinga. Mre nango sunenganga la namohotana. Receive manifestation. Receive manifestation. Say I house the only true God. Jesus Christ. Eternal life. I am unbeatable. Jesus is God who became a man to save man. Sit down, let's push a bit. Adam was the image of God. He was God on the earth. He had dominion. Genesis 1 26 tells us that. After the loss of that dominion, dominion never came back to man again until Jesus came. Genesis 1 26 to 28, God created man in his image. In his likeness, bless them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue the earth and have dominion. Male and female created he them. Psalms chapter 8 verse 4, Psalm began to interrogate Genesis. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? What is man? 
Why are you mindful of man? There's something about man. David was trying to figure out. What is man? Hebrews chapter 2 now gives us an answer. Verse 6 where we read. We're going to read it again. But one in a certain place testified saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Seven. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor. And did set him over the works of thy hands. Now wait. What is man that thou art mindful of him was an interrogation from a prophet. A prophet knew that the man we are talking about there could not be Adam. Because Adam is supposed to have everything in subjection. But when he looks at Adam, everything is not in subjection. Meaning, this man has not yet come. Philippians chapter 2, we shall come back to Hebrews. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 6. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Go back to that verse 6 and give me the Amplified of Philippians chapter 2. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Yes. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. Now hold it. He became like man. He removed, he removed like a cloth that thing that makes him God. Then he took man and put on the same person. If you can't understand that, God will have to help you. <laughs> Give me my suit. <laughs> Let me explain it. When I say God will have to help you, God say that's why you are here. Help them. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to do what I'm going to do now. <laughs> because God says I should help you. This is God. Light be created man. Bam. God. No son, no Holy Ghost. All of son, Holy Ghost in one. God. There's no need for Holy Ghost. No need for son. So he's God. God in charge. Then man fell. With the fall of man. Man has to buy man back. No man can buy man. God loves man and must save man. Nothing on earth could afford it. Clement come. So God said. As God, I have decided. He removed God and kept God. He took on man, the same person. So God is sitting there as God and God is wearing man. So he is both God and man in one. But he needed man to save man. And he needed God to still be in charge. So as God, he's in charge. But to save man, he becomes man. It's called incarnation. That's why even Mary cannot explain how she got pregnant. Because it's beyond humanity. Is beyond humanity. The pregnancy of Mary was a miracle. That's the only language that can explain it to you right now. The only way we can say it was that Mary, Mary became pregnant by a miracle. Finish. 
because it was God wearing man. So that as man, he will go through the path that man needs to go through. And pay the price that man needs to pay. So that he can restore man to where man ought to be. Where, where all things are subject to man. Am I teaching? Okay, read for me Hebrews where we are. Chapter 2 verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Including angels. All, all things have been put under man. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Yes. But now we see not yet all things put we under him. We do not see all things put under him. Why? Man sinned. What was the plan? Let them have dominion. But that dominion cannot be seen. Why? transgression. So, since we don't see that dominion, what do we do? We look up, and what do we see? We see Jesus. Who is Jesus? The man. Which man? The man that will put man back in Genesis 1.26. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. Who is Jesus? The man. Which man? The man I told, let them have. Who is that man that was told, let them have? In that man is male and female. And who is that man? We see Jesus. We see Jesus. Give me verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things. Yes. And by whom are all things. Yes. In bringing many sons unto glory. Yes. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. He was made perfect through sufferings. You know what that means? He obeyed the father to the later. The same place where Adam lost it, Jesus passed. He obeyed in every situation. He obeyed. That is why it is called suffering. He, he, he put himself in a straight jacket and followed all instruction. Went through all temptations without falling for none. He became perfect through suffering. That is, he passed by being tempted. Okay? Read verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So Jesus, the man, obeyed. And in his obedience, all men obeyed. So he is a sanctifier. We are the sanctified. Both he, the sanctifier, and we, the sanctified, are one. So that separation that Adam brought, Jesus closed back. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Jesus, the man. Read verse 12 to 15 for me. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He has destroyed him and has delivered. He has delivered them who through fear of death were subject to death all their lifetime. He will not deliver. He hath 
delivered. I am putting the dead. For those of you that are going through six months of deliverance, is fraud. Anybody putting you in six months of deliverance is fraudulent. He's fraudulent. I don't care who he is. And I don't care the dreams you are having. Who don't dream? And you know there are people that <laughs> ignorance very expensive. In fact, you can't afford it. That's how expensive it is. Because you will die young. If you follow ignorance. Has delivered. What is delivered? Eh? Help me. What is delivered? I'm putting there. So you know that it is not deliver. Delivered. <laughs> You don't get delivered twice yes, sir. as a Christian. You get deliverance once and it happens one time. It's not a series of prayers. It's one, in fact, it's not a prayer. Deliverance is not a prayer. So anybody doing you prayer of deliverance is, is milking your ignorance. Deliverance is one time and it happens at the moment you believe the message. So I say, but I'm still feeling one kind. Your feelings are not doctrine. Your feelings are not doctrine. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for so scripture which is superior to your feelings and dreams, says, who hath delivered, delivered. <laughs> who hath delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have a redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness. So what is deliverance? The forgiveness of sin. What is deliverance? The forgiveness of sins. What is deliverance? The forgiveness of sins. How do you receive the forgiveness of sins? Through preaching. Acts 10 30, 80. Read for me. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. All right. Acts 13, 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. What is preached unto you? So what is forgiveness of sins? Deliverance. How is it given to people? By preaching, not prayer. There's nothing like prayer of deliverance. There is only preaching of deliverance. Because when deliverance is preached, it produces faith. When your faith connects with what Christ has done, you are born again. Born again is deliverance. And it's done once. And not once for a long time. It's done once instant. Some say no. Uh, Dr. Damina you don't understand. There are demons that. Come to my room every night. You don't need deliverance. You need. 
casting out of devils. Those are two different things. There is a difference between deliverance and casting out devils. I've casted out many demons in my life. Many. I can't number. I started casting out demons 1983. I've been casting out demons from 83 till now. So you can imagine. You can imagine. I terrorize demons so much at a particular time in my life that I will just enter a place. People will start shouting, have you come to torment us? Have you? I have not said anything. They were on that. Everywhere I was just looking for them. So don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I know what I'm talking about. Demons are cast out. But you see the difference is. Demons can be cast out of a man. And the man is still not born again. Okay. Are you here? So that demons left a man. Doesn't automatically mean he's born again. But when you are delivered. You're born again. You cannot be delivered and you're not born again. But demons can be cast out of you and you're not born again. That's why Jesus said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, meaning when they cast out demons from a man, he said the demon will go to dry places looking for a place of rest. Looking for rest. Just like there remained a rest for the people of God, unclean spirits too are looking for rest. <laughs> And he said, as the demon is moving, it findeth none. Then it says, I will go back to my house. Look at, look at the, look at the insult. Look at the insult. I will go, when did he build the house? How much did he invest to buy the house? <laughs> I will go back to my house. Then he now comes to check. And the man is empty and clean. Meaning from the time the demon was cast out, nobody gave him the message of Christ. So faith has not entered him. That means you can, demons can be cast out of you and you are still not born again. So since the man is empty, no occupant. He now says, I know the capacity of my former house. Demons, come. I need seven free demons that have no accommodation. We have just secured a house. And it has eight bedrooms. Then all of them will come. Shh, they will enter the man. Eight of them. And the state of that man will be worse than before. Why? Because that man, demons were cast out of him. But he was not delivered. If the man was delivered, they will not come back. Because eternal life will have occupied the man. That's why many churches, where they do all this so-called deliverance, the people never are free. They, they are, their deliverance is on the go. You know why? The more they are doing the deliverance, the more they are putting more demons in. The more they are talking to you about your situation and introducing you to different demons, the more those demons are accessing you. So how can you be free? That's why every time there is a deliverance service, you are the only candidate. In every service, you are the only candidate. Before they even start praising, yeah, 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 yeah. you are the only one. You have become a victim. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Kaya, leave that thing. Leave, 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 leave that thing. Nobody will use you to drink Gary. Your amen is looking for hell. Say, I am, I am free because Jesus lives in me. He is a son. He has set me free. I am free indeed. I didn't hear your amen. The gospel is preached. Forgiveness of sins is preached. What is preaching? Your sins are forgiven. How? By the death 
the burial, the resurrection. How? The death was my death. The burial was my burial. The resurrection is my resurrection. That identification enforces the reality of the finished work in the heart of a man. Listen carefully. Let me round up. Are you blessed? Yes, Let me round up this house. The fall of Adam was a legal issue. It's not a sentimental issue. The fall of Adam. It was a legal issue. So you can't cry and be free from sin. You didn't hear me. There's no amount of cry. You will cry and be free from sin. It's not a sentimental issue. Neither is it an emotional issue. It's a legal matter. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody go to the court of law where he's convicted as a criminal and he cried and the judge changed the sentence? Have you ever seen? No, it's a question. Have you ever seen? Okay, if you think it will work, go and steal this afternoon. I give you permission. And steal in a way you will be arrested. Let them take you to Ibawa Barracks for one night and, and, and let them charge you to court. We will all come on that day to that court. We will join you to cry. Let's see the judgment the judge will give. There is no sentiment in legal issues. In legal issues, only facts and evidences suffices. Leave that thing. You think because you're crying, oh, 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 you think that's why God is forgiving you? Cry till you die. If not for Jesus, you'll be in the hottest part of hell. Where the fire is coming out from, that's where they would drop you. If not for Jesus. Leave that in. Thank God for Jesus. Not crying? What is crying? Romans 6.23, let's look at it. Let's look at doctrine. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What is the salary of sin? It's a legal matter. If you work for an office and it's time to pay you salary and they don't pay you, is it right? You can sue them. You can sue them because your salary is your salary. When you commit sin, it is legal for you to be paid. You must be paid. No, 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 no. You must be paid. If you don't come for the salary, the salary will come to you. You, 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 it's a legal matter. When you sin, you must be paid. What is your salary? Debt. There is no two ways about it. Somebody say, I sin and I confess. How can confessing pay for debt? Those of you that think just by confessing, God will forgive me because I confess. Father, I'm sorry. Forgive my sins. I have just done it again. It is number 55. I am sorry. Then God said, okay, don't worry. We are cleaning it now with the blood. It's a lie. It doesn't work like that. This is a legal matter. This is what? The only way you will be settled after sinning is what? Death. Take it. There are no two ways. That you can't break the scriptures. But... The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Telana, what is eternal life? Who is eternal life? Who is Jesus? And what is that? It's a gift. Do you work for a gift? But do you work for wages? Do you work for a gift? Do you work for wages? You work for wages. So all this working you've been working, the wages of it is what? Is death. But then God said, this one you didn't work for. Eh? This one you didn't work for. That is good for you. Take it free. Much more. <laughs> Am I preaching good here? Much more. They which receive the abundance of grace. Which is the gift of righteousness. What shall happen to them? They reign in life. Somebody shout much more. Hey. Now. Sit down, let's settle the matter. I'm closing. Just sit down, let's settle. Can we settle this matter? So every, all have, all have, and the wages of sin for all. So everybody is, has, has received their salary. 
Okay? So then now, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, then 27. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Yes. But now, once, now once, once, how many times? Once, go ahead. Once in the end of the world, yes. he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice. He has appeared to put away sin by implication, to put away the wages. To put away sin and by implication, to put away the wages by crying? No. How? By what? Why does he, why can't he just wish it away? Why can't he just confess it away? Why can't Jesus say, okay, okay, man, we have sinned against your God. We have sinned. We are sorry. We are sorry. Take away the cup. We are sorry. God will say, okay, you have confessed. No problem. You can now go. Why? It's a legal matter. And in legality, you must pay the price. You must. The best any court of jurisdiction can do for you is to reduce the sentence. That's the best they can do for you. But if it is serving, you, know, you will serve it. Except you have a lawyer who understands the loophole of the law and has been able to to equip himself with sound facts. Now a lawyer can free you from an offense and the judge will release you if the lawyer knows his onions. Otherwise, you are done for. Even the lawyer is not going to free you from it by sentiment. It will be by hard facts, by sound argument. What kind of argument? Sound argument. Very sound argument. It's a legal matter. Redemption. That's why you don't come and tell God, Father, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Calm down. Let's teach you the legality of redemption. So you save your tears for better things. Save your tears for better things. See, I hear, I hear. <laughs> I know so many of you are here. This in First John 1, 9. Leave that thing. Just stay in this 30 days. You'll understand. Ah, read for me the next verse. And as it is appointed, it's an men, appointment unto men. How many times? Once to die. To do what? To die. After this, why judgment? Why death? Because the wages of sin? Good. So, and every man must keep that appointment. Why? Because all have sinned. It's not begging. So, where does your freedom come legally into this matter. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. For the suffering, where he became lower than the angels is where he had to suffer for death. Why does he have to suffer for death? All have and the wages of sin and he came on your therefore your death is his death. Okay, for the suffering of death. And what is the next thing that followed that? Crowned with glory and honor. That he by the grace of that God. That he by the grace of God. Should taste death for every man. Should do what? So who did Jesus die for? For everybody. So what is the grounds for you to be free from sin? That you cried? What? So the death of Jesus was your freedom from sin. So the next time Satan says you are a sinner, tell him, idiot. Have you forgotten what happened 2,000 years ago? I died in Christ and I rose again. Get out of my face. Who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. That's why based on that, forgiveness is preached. Based on that, we now preach Forgiveness. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Why? The price has been paid in full. Did I preach good? 
Jump on your feet, walk to four, five people, tell them I'm totally forgiven. Completely forgiven. Eternally forgiven. Forgiven how? Is there anybody officially forgiven here? How long are you forgiven for? No, wait, 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 wait. How long are you forgiving for? Are you sure? Forever. Forever. What about your past mistakes? Huh? Are they also forgiven? Why are they forgiven? Because the death of Jesus was backdated. You're not hearing me. Jesus died 2,000 years ago. But in that death, the price he paid was, was carried from Adam. Every sin from Adam, all was carried through Abraham, Isaac, all the sins of the Old Testament people. It was dumped on Christ. So he carried the sins of the transgressions of the past on his head. Then he now took the sin of the present. Forgive them. They know not what they are doing. Okay. Then God now zoomed into the future. Because it was one death. It was one death and for all. So God zoomed into the future in his foreknowledge. And calculated what every man was capable of committing. Then multiplied it. He went ahead of time. Covered your children, your children's children, 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 children. Until the end of the age. Then he carried that. Brought it back on Christ. So he carried the sins of the past. The sins of the present. The sins of the future. On his head. That is why it was by that one death. By that one death. That is why that death. He died, die. He didn't die. He died. He died, die. Die, die. Now when he rose. The forgiveness. Was for the transgressions of the past. The present, and that is why anybody who believes the gospel is saved because it covers for the future. As you stand right now, God is smiling, He looks at you and is happy that His dream from the beginning of time has been fulfilled in you. The last Adam, where is the last Adam? Where is the last Adam? Lift your right hand and shout, I am forgiven, completely forgiven. By his death, his burial, his resurrection, I stand saved, sanctified, eternally. I do not have any doubt in approaching God. God is my father. He lives in me. I live in him. Now throw your two hands up to heaven freely. Shout, Abba, Father. No, some of you didn't do it like children that belong to their father. Throw your hands up. All right? Shout, Abba Father. Abba, Father. Thank you. You live in me. I live in you. We cannot be separated. What cannot fight you? Cannot fight me. You cannot fail. I cannot fail. You cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. You have justified me. I am forever justified. If there's somebody like that, let your clap and shout. Celebrate your redemption. Celebrate your redemption. Celebrate your redemption. Celebrate the forgiveness of sins. Celebrate the nature of God in you. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call. Plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.
Okay, welcome back. Papa is uh, here, upstairs with us. Every other thing you see is downstairs. Now he's in the upper room with me. That's right. I've been waiting for him all day. <laughs> Baba. I, I, I like the fact that, you know, I ran away from Baba because they were, you know, people were asking me too many questions. But many of our international audience members are calling you Baba more now. <laughs> so what do we do? I don't know. What? Leave that to you. <laughs> So, Baba, it's so nice to see you so tonight. So good to be with you, Mr. Bush. Dr. Tonight. Abel Damina. What a Thank blessing. you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So, we'll start from you without any further ado. Sure. Good evening, Baba and Mr. Bush. I really enjoy Baba's um, teaching. But, Baba, I want you to please pray for me. I have had stillbirth twice. So, I want God to bless my womb with twin babies. And I don't want affliction to rise again. God bless you. Oh, what's the name? Father, we pray for Nseobong right now. We rebuke whatever is responsible for stillbirth and we ask for a miracle. In the name of Jesus, Amen. receive the miracle now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, still from you, Edidion. Please, Papa, how do I make my supplications known to God according to Philippians 4.4? 4? Well, you make them known by making them known. known. Mm. You pray in faith and receive by faith. Like I always say, the problem is not with God giving. It's always with man receiving because God gives you everything. He has already given you everything in Christ. However, I will advise you because you're in New York, it's easy for you. Stop by Power City. Ask for my series on prayer. It's 30 hours. It will teach you how to supplicate effectively on any issue of life. It's 30 hours of teaching on prayer. Just stop by and ask for that series. It will help you. Okay. Um, Papa, still from uh, you, Sunday, Daniel. Um, writing from here says glory greetings papa damina and apostle michael bush papa you're doing great i pray for divine protection long life and prosperity for you and your family papa please don't be offended by my question does speaking in tongues expire i'm asking this because there was a popular tongues you used to speak, which received great attention globally, but with time you stopped speaking it. Ikotabaya, Ikotabaya. Ikotabaya. Okay, Ikotabaya. Okay, he yes. wrote it like it's an acquired thing, and it goes on to say, <laughs> and it says, and it says, Papa also explained Jeremiah forty six twenty five. No tongues don't expire at all. Yeah, they are spiritual stuff; they don't expire. However, because you grow as you keep speaking. Diverse kinds of tongues flow through you. So you find out that you speak one particular kind of tongues, and after a while, you're speaking another type. Doesn't mean anything next expired. The reason why it gained attention is because my media department caught those particular tongues and kept playing them and playing them and playing them. Otherwise, nothing expires in the spirit. Like it was one thirty days of glory, the end of it. Okay. That those tongues <laughs> came out. You know? Okay. Um other uh, parts of uh, quite boom states now i review you we'll go to ecotic panel good evening dr abel damina thank you sir for the good work you have been doing please did jesus baptize other people soon after his baptism by john please doctor explain the place john 3 22 to 25 and john 4 1 to 2 and it has a second question doctor you did say that there is only one baptism, that is Holy Spirit baptism. Please explain the place of John 3, 3 to 6. Thank you, Ituro, in a correct manner. Well, Jesus never baptized anybody. That scripture said it was just the way it was written. If you check that chapter 4 where you quoted, you find out that it was the disciples who did the baptism, not Jesus himself. So it's just the way it was written. Jesus never baptized anybody. Remember, he said that the only reason why he was doing the baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. What was the righteousness to be fulfilled? The only way John would have known that Jesus was Jesus was through water baptism. Because John said, he that sent me said, upon whom you will see the spirit descend on like a dove, he it is. So the only way John would have known Jesus was by that water baptism. So that's why Jesus insisted that it has to be done for all righteousness to be fulfilled. Water baptism is not New Testament. There's only one baptism and it is baptism in the spirit or baptism into Christ. Remember, John himself said, I indeed baptize with water. I must decrease, Jesus must increase. Then John said that Jesus, who is greater than him when he comes, he will not use water. He will baptize with the Holy Ghost. Today, John the Baptist is no more here. It is Jesus. So if it is Jesus, it is Holy Ghost baptism. That's the only baptism available to the believer. 
Okay, Papa, um, when I can now, that's the correct one, eh? we need to go to Aked next, but so we need to come back to you yes. to connect that. So back in New York, good evening, Honorable Dr. Ebel Damina and Mr. Michael Bush. I'm delighted, Kanem, I'm arriving from Uyo. Please, I really appreciate you, sir, for revealing Christ, the Savior of the world, to this generation. Daddy, you are a blessing to this generation. God bless you. And also, Mr. Bush, you are doing a great job. God bless you. Amen. Daddy, you are teaching has corrected so many errors in my life. Please, Baba, I have a question. Is it lawful for a lady who is pregnant to cover her face with wedding a tie during her marriage, especially when her spouse is responsible for the pregnancy? Is there any consequence in this act? Well, like I always say, white wedding is not Christian. White wedding is not Bible. White wedding is culture from white people. Simple. Now, However, if a brother and a sister gets pregnant, it depends on what the culture of the local church where they are in says concerning that. That is what the person will have to submit to. You know, so that's just it. There's, it, there's no, it, it has no spiritual implication whatsoever. It's just what happens within the society of a people. And so you honor because you belong to that society. Any moment now, we we'll leave uh, a quiet boom for for Taco, that's for River State, but we need to do that on route. Papa Damina and happy birthday, Sir Michael Bush. But by it's been two, but the two, birthdays are still coming. Yes, it's still More continuing. Are going to stick <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. and so it says, indeed, your labor of love in the gospel of Christ is amazing. May God continue to deliver you and your entire household from the evil plots and those you are stepping on their toes as you labor to enlighten the body of Christ. Please, bye bye. Help explain what happened in these scriptures. Second Kings 3, 26, 27. Thanks. Ambassador Mark in Aked. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him 700 men that drew sword to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. 27. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel and they parted from him and returned to their own land. I know what you're asking me. I know what the question is. Was it God or who was the one in, in play? It wasn't God. God never demand for human sacrifice. Human sacrifice, those rituals are demonic. They are not godly. God never demands for human sacrifice. If you want full teaching on that, get my teaching on Soteria season six. Soteria season six. It wasn't God in operation. It was some deity in the Old Testament. Because of the human sacrifice involved, Evil spirits got involved and, you know, dismantled things and made things happen in that battle. All of you must always remember that when you read of battle between country and country in the Old Testament, it is not God. It's like America today going to war with another country. It is not God. These are activities between human, human beings. And when such things happen, the people with the greater advantage are those that have the greater weaponry, the greater power, the greater army strength, and the greater strategy. They are the ones that will win such a thing. It is not God. God does not get involved in such things. Okay, let's go to next door, River State. But I caught here we come. Greetings, Papa and Mr. Bush. I want to first appreciate you, Papa, for this marvelous work you're doing in the body of Christ. Your ministry has brought Christianity into a time of great spiritual awakening, just like the ministry of Paul did during the apostolic era. It pleases me to be part of this great ministry God has entrusted in your hands. Your teachings have truly transformed many lives across the nations of the earth. Thank you for submitting to this great calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. Papa, I really need an explanation on what Paul was teaching in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 9. If the explanations are in the upcoming book you talked about, I will wait until it's available. If not, please kindly address these few questions. One, what does Paul mean by the man of sin? The son of perdition. All right, then the book. I even wrote another book and added to the list the office of the pastor. Mm. The ministry of is a whole volume. Anybody can read that and pastor a church. Okay. It's a powerful material. So it's in that book, The Last Days. But the man of sin in that context is actually the man of sin. It's a syntax issue. Mm. If you read the previous chapter, you follow the discourse into chapter two, you will see that he was talking about the men of sin, sin. people that did not obey the gospel did not believe the gospel. They are the people called the men of sin. They are the people called the son of perdition. That's what he was dealing with. Okay, so this is Joseph um, Ike Chuku writing from Potako River States. 
Number two, what does Paul mean by the mystery of iniquity? Oh, that's what it is. The, the denial of the gospel, rejection of the gospel. According to verse 8, has that wicked been revealed? I don't know what it means. Has yes, that wicked been revealed? Has been, the Antichrist is already around. Opposition against the gospel of Christ is already around. There are religions that don't believe that Jesus is God. And there are religions that don't believe that Jesus came in the flesh. And the Bible tells us, the same scripture tells us that anybody who doesn't believe in that, the deity and the humanity of Christ is Antichrist. So the man of sin is in operation. Verse 9 says his coming is after the working of Satan. Is there any difference between the man of sin or son of perdition and Satan? Or are they the same being or is it a message? They are interconnected, interconnected. Satan is behind all the operations. The explanation of these verses is important to me as I'm trying to unlearn the subject of Antichrist being a person and relearn that it's only a message according to your teachings. Yeah. Thank you so much, Baba. Your son, Joseph Ikechuku in Port Harcourt. Very powerful guy in Port Harcourt. Right, yeah. right. It, it shows. Yeah. Okay, still from Port Harcourt. My name is Victoria David. Good evening, Papa. My question about baptism. Please explain to me John 3, 5. Thank you and God bless you. John 3, 5 is water symbolic of the spirit. Water symbolic of the spirit. If you read the entire context, John 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you will see that what he was dealing with there is water, which is the spirit, the Kai rule of Bible interpretation. is water symbolic of the spirit. And if you follow the context, in John chapter 7, he explained further. John chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Next verse. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So in the book of John, when you see water, it is symbolic of the spirit of God. So to be born of water means to be born of the spirit or to be born again. Okay. Whilst we're still in um, Otako, we're still in River State, we're going, by the way, we're going to Bayosa right after now. But right now, an anonymous entry from River Steel. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for your continuous teaching. My marriage is less than a year and we have been having issues. It was recently revealed that my mother-in-law has, has been manipulating my husband with Baba Black Magic. Please Baba. pray for me. I want order and peace restored in my marriage. Black magic, black magic. Well, you are in authority. You're a child of God. You have authority over those little, little things. You know, instead of bothering yourself about the black magic, what you should rather seek for is a rapport with your husband and understanding with your husband. Seek for how both of you can come to a place of understanding. Two cannot work together except they be agreed. Most marital problems are not demonic. They are just simple understanding. Because unbelievers who don't have Christ have good marriages. How can a believer with Christ be disturbed by demons from having a good marriage? Spend time in prayer, seek wisdom, and the Bible says a soft answer, turn it away wrong. So, you know, all of those, there, there, there's a tact you require to be able to handle your husband in such a way that his family will even say you have charmed him, you have charmed their son. It's tact, it's wisdom, it's skill. As you seek to grow, I recommend for you my book, Understanding relationships, marriage, and family life. It will give you a lot of skills and strategy on how to, you know, get the attention of your husband and bring your family to a place of harmony. It's very important. And I still will have two quick anonymous entries still from Potako, then we move to Bayelsa. So this one, good evening, Papa and Mr. Bush. Thanks for the good work you're doing. Great grace is upon you. Papa, my husband and I have been tapped faithless because we have had our children through CS. Baba. Is it the will of God for it to be so or? My three children came by CS. Oh. Three of my girls, they came by CS. I'm not faithless. <laughs> I've prayed for women whom doctors told cannot bring out children. I spoke to them through my phone and they delivered two, three minutes after the prayer. I'm not faithless. What happened was we made the choice. My wife didn't want to go through all the stress of labor. And she saw that the easiest way to do is just open up, take the baby out, and all of us are smiling. So we went the, the shortest way and we're happy. I came by CS. Oh. And, and, and Baba, I hope that I don't get disqualified from presenting the question and answer session. For you know, I, 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 the superstition in my place, yes. in my mind, and yes. I love the superstition, I okay. love that belief, okay. is that if you come by CS, no man can kill you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, Baba, I love the thought of that. Yes. I always tell myself, when they're looking for my trouble, you yes. know, I come from Oran. I, I came back here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah. this, this other one, um, Baba, it's a delight listening to you. Uh, a teaching the knowledge of Christ is really overflowing. Thank you, sir. Please, Baba, pray for my daughter Choma to get a good life partner. Thank you, sir. Oh, Father, we pray for Choma that you know supernaturally she will have direction, clarity, and she will know the right person. And circumstances and situations are working to bring her and the right person together in Jesus' name, amen. By also, here we come, Mrs. Chinier. Baba, good evening. Please sir, join faith with us and pray for the fruit of the womb, a son. We have been married four years plus. Oh, Father, we pray for that family right now. Whatever is obstructing the ability to conceive, whether from the husband or the wife, in the name of Jesus, we declare right now, you receive power to take in and bring forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Still from Bielsa, Dogigai Bofa, Bielsa State. Good evening, Papa and Mr. Bush. God bless you for the good works you're doing in this generation. Baba, my problem is that my family does not know God, or members of my family don't know God. They worship idols. My people carry the idol as an oracle, and it works for them. But if I try to do the same, it won't work for me. So I came to Akwaibum States for counseling, and I was told that I have the call of God on my life, and that's why nothing is working for me, including my business. Baba, please, how do I go about this calling? I need your advice and prayer. Thank you, Baba. It's a lie. Any man of God who tells you because you have a calling, that's why your business is not working, just lied to you in the afternoon under the sunlight. There's no such thing. God does not frustrate you because he wants you to do something. He's not a tyrant. He's not a wicked person. He's a loving father. In fact, it is even because God has called you that your business should work. Because God will always use his goodness to bring you into his purpose for your life. So don't buy that lie. And if you buy that lie, it will keep causing you a lot of harm and miscarriage in the pursuit of your life's goals. You must know that God loves you. Moreover, the call of God is for every believer. All of us are called for those he foreknew, he predestinated. Those he predestinated, he called. Every child of God is called, including those that are doing businesses that are doing well. So don't buy that excuse and let it mess up your mind. The call of God should make you a better person make money, do business, make more money. The more money you have, the more it will be easy for you to support the call of God on your life and be a blessing to people. So don't buy that lie. And we pray for your businesses. We pray for your career. We pray for your pursuits. And above all, we command that every mindset that is contrary to God's goodness and God's love and kindness is terminated right now. Clarity comes to you. You are you increase in grace and in knowledge. And we command the devil to take his hands off your business in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. So, Baba, God yes. doesn't frustrate you because he wants you to do something. No, 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 so, no, what no. happened to Jonah that he ended up in the belly Jonah of the fish? Jonah was just symbolic of dead, burial, and resurrection. Was it real? No, it was symbolic. The Old Testament is types and shadows. The message is Christ. So, all the drama, for example, David. You know, David prophesied, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? In order for him to prophesy that because he wasn't, he didn't have the Holy Spirit living in him. God arranged circumstances where David fell in a cave. And then in trying to come out of the cave, he couldn't come out. So he screamed that prophecy. My God, my God, why? So that that prophecy came out of that circumstance. So in the Old Testament, God allowed circumstances and different situations to get them to prophesy concerning Christ. That's why after they prophesied, they themselves didn't understand what they were saying. But today we can tell what they were saying. Same thing with Jonah. It wasn't because of uh, God frustrating him for anything at all. Okay, from... Portacod, River State. Let's go next to Ondo. Do we have a caller? Okay, our first call tonight. Hello. Hello, evening. Thank you for joining us, ma'am. Your name, where you're calling from? Go ahead. My name is Rebecca. I'm calling from Hollywood. Go ahead. Good evening, Papa. Good evening. Bless you. Papa, I want to thank you for your sacrifice the body of Christ. Thank you for all your doing for us. May God bless you and strengthen you. Amen. Okay, so let's uh, hurry up to Ondo, Pastor Folari Nakintayo. Papa, good evening. Please, I have a few questions. Is it really true that one saved, always saved? How, how do I help you now? Yes, it is true that once you're saved, you have eternal life. Eternal life means eternal salvation. 
Eternal salvation means eternal inheritance. Now, the reason why you think you can lose salvation is because you think you saved yourself. You didn't save yourself. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. John chapter 10 verse 28 and 29. I give you eternal life and you shall never perish. Nobody shall be able to pluck you out of my father's hand. So salvation is eternal. We come back to Pastor Akintayo in on those states, but yet another caller now. Hello. Hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, go ahead. This is your man, Reverend Sam Ajala. Aha. I was just about to tell you, <laughs> his, I have not read his question. His question is <laughs> just behind, in front of me. Yes, go ahead. Intercontinent, intercontinent, <laughs> Michael Bush. So nice to I hear from you. Of great honor. Thank you. Yeah. I'm happy to tell you that I'm Reverend Sam Ajala of Methodist Church, Nigeria, Oshobo. Okay. And thank God Methodist Church has honored you. Papa, we thank God for your life. Amen. A lot of teachings you have been given to us, Papa. I've answered a number of my questions. My family has always been blessed. My ministry transformed. Papa, I want to say that God will continue to strengthen you. And Amen. then... Papa, don't be bothered about uh, the foolish questions people are making. Only help us bear with the situations of things and people, so that uh, some of your teaching, you will not look at them as being as stupid, as being foolish. You help us lower the tempo, pity them, honor them, and the Lord will continue to honor you, Papa. Amen. We always enjoy you. Amen. A lot of denominations, even some geos I know, have vowed secretly learning a lot of teachings that you are giving unto us. Amen. Finally, please don't forget my 70 questions I'm going, that you I'm going back to them any moment now. Well, Michael it, Bush, thank I, you, God bless you. Well, thank you, amen. We'll I'm finish. going back to it any moment yeah, now, we'll as a matter of fact. But let's just go back to Pastor Akintayo in yes. Ondo State and round off two more questions. Yes. Papa, what does so it mean? Let me give you more scriptures. Yes. Hebrews 7.25 is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God by faith, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession. Romans 8, 23, till the end of that chapter, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Salvation is a union with God that can never be separated. Okay, so um, Pastor Akintayo, let's just quickly round off with you. What does it mean, Papa, when the Bible says if someone has been doing good before and does evil, that the evil would cover all the good he had done before? That's in the Old Testament. You're quoting the law of Moses. That's not in the New. Okay. Jesus took care of all of that. Can you also explain Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, 26 to 29? If we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain no sacrifice, but a fearful indignation that shall devour the adversary. The active word there is adversary. Who is an adversary? One who rejects the gospel of Christ. So that scripture is for people who did not accept the salvation that Christ offers. Okay, from uh, Ondo to Oshun State, Oshubo, we're coming. Reverend Samanjala, who just left off the call with us, we're coming to you right on the heels of this caller. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Your name, where you're calling from? Please, my name is Among Rebunati. I'm calling from Ghana. Ghana. Go ahead. Papa, good evening, sir. Evening. Bless you. Bless you. Papa, your teachings have changed my life since 2017. Wow. When you, when you came to Kaswadi in Ghana. Yes. Since from then, I'm continuing following you to this day. Wow. But, Papa, I've completed school for three years now. I have not gotten a job. I have applied everywhere. I need your prayer. Okay. All right. We join faith with you right now and we call for a job for you. We command circumstances and situations to create an opportunity for you to find a gainful employment and make impact. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, so Reverend Sam Ajala in Oshobo Ocean State, we're here with you. Your thirty-first question, you know, it's not seventy questions. He asked Reverend you, you Sam Ajala. So, so. Yes, because there are some yes, that are ABC, four, five, yeah. you know. So, but the thirty-first, as you listed it out, when a Christian has great passion for souls, evangelism, planting of churches, and the very sick, and uh, not remembered to be supported, what is uh, his or her reward? Oh, you'll be rewarded for striving to stay in the faith in spite of your situation. We preach the gospel in and out of season. As long as you stay in it, you don't quit, you don't give up. There's a reward for you for persevering in spite of the circumstances to preach Christ. So he's just wondering, is that what Paul meant when he said, Christ have I called unto God to remove this stone and God says my grace no, is no, sufficient no. unto you? No, no, no. Brother Paul was going through human persecution with the pretext and the post-text of that scripture. You will see that it was persecution that Paul called a thorn in the flesh. And you can't pray persecution away. So that's why God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. Question 32 from Reverend Sam Ajala in Oshobo, Oshun State. If I may ask, Papa, you look fetish, jumping and demonstrating all over the place. Kindly join CAN, under which PFN is. If your church has not, very essential, sir, especially to review this truth explosion. I was PFN youth chairman for eight years of my life. I think I've contributed my quota. Let me face my assignment. Okay, so question 33 from Reverend Sam Ajala. Why do we have... I don't know. Is this what it is? Plagiarism in the Bible and some verses missing with different versions? Is that what it is? No, 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 no. There, there's not. What, what, what we have is actually translation issue. And it is simple. The Bible is an ancient material. So because of, you know, the age at which the Bible was written and the, the language that was used, and we're translating the language to another language, sometimes you have those issues. So that's where proper Bible teaching is necessary and proper Bible study is necessary. Using the aid of the Greek and the Hebrew and all the resources that enables you to bring out the meaning of words in scripture, which is what we call hermeneutics in theology. There's nothing wrong with the Bible. It's just that the seeming contradictions are in the minds of a man who has not been tutored on how to use the book. Okay, from, um, from Oshun State, we're going straight to Lagos. I.K. Peters, good evening, sir. On a Sunday, that's during the second service, you said that God didn't send down the fire when Elijah called for it. Who did then? Evangels, which of them? Divine or demonic? Seeing Elijah is God's servant. Thank you, sir. Again, Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to 54. So you know what happened with Elijah. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Talking about Jesus. Next verse and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Next verse. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Next verse. And when his disciples, James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did they are talking to Jesus now. Look at Jesus' answer, very instructive. But he turned and rebuked them. In the Bible, it's only evil spirits you rebuke. And said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. That means the spirit that brought fire down for Elijah was not the spirit of God. Because Jesus does not do double standards. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he cannot allow them bring fire today, and he tells them that fire is not of the spirit of God, then certainly the fire that came down in the days of Elijah was not from God. And let me tell you the truth, you better believe Jesus because Jesus is God redefining the character of God. Okay, so Lagos, while growing up, we had so many things in church in what to look out for in choosing a spouse. So as a believer, do you need to wait to hear God speak to you or tell you the name of who to marry? How should a believer go about marital choice doctrinally? Thank you, sir. In the choice of your life partner, you don't wait for God. God is not the one that will live with a woman. He that finds a wife finds a good. You are the one that will have to take responsibility. Look for a sister. However, the Bible gives you certain guides to help you in finding a life partner. Number one, two cannot work together except they be agreed. 
Number two, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Light and darkness has nothing in common. Number three, make no friendship with an angry man, lest you learn his ways. Number four, make no friendship with a drunkard. Those are things the Bible outlines that helps you. So in looking for a life partner, these are some of the things to also look out for. However, ultimately, you'll have to choose somebody whom you love. Don't close your eye in selecting a life partner. After you pray, shine your eyes and look well. Make sure the person is attractive to you, whether it's a man or a lady. Make sure you love the person. You are, you know, you like everything about the person. If not everything, most things are about the person because you will be living with this physical person for the rest of your life. All those are very vital factors. However, I have a teaching on marriage, both audio and I have a book. You can order for the 30 hours of teaching on marriage or you can order for the book from our office. Two more questions from Lagos and then we zoom out of the country. Good evening, Dr. Damina and Mr. Bush. Thank you for the profound teaching. My life has changed dramatically as I have a clear understanding of God's word. Please, can you help explain Luke 24, 35? God bless you, sir. Utsu Sam in Lagos. Luke 24, 35. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. I thought that it is not the breaking of bread that opened their eyes. Look at what opened their eyes. And as they don't speak, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. Now go back to verse 30. Let's see what opened their eyes. It was not the bread. And it came to pass as he sat at me to them, he took bread and blessed it. Remember the breaking of bread here was not Passover. It was not the rebranded Holy Communion. It was dinner because this bread didn't have protocol. The Passover bread has protocol. It was just ordinary food they ate. It was not any special food. He just took bread, broke it, blessed it, and gave to them. They ate. Just like I will come to your house, you bring food, I pray over the food, we eat. That's what happened in that verse. But look at what happened the next verse, 31. And their eyes were open and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight, 32. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? So what opened their eyes was what Jesus taught them from the scriptures. I can prove further. That same Luke 24, verse 44 and 45. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was here with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. When he said that, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So it was not food that opened their eyes. It was what Jesus taught them from the scriptures that opened their understanding. Mr. Bush, great job you're doing. Well done. Baba, great grace is upon you eternally. Baba, in Galatians 4, 5, talking about those under the law, a, were the Jews under the law of Moses that Christ had to come specifically for their redemption? Yes, the law was given to the Jews. But so continues, were there others under the law that needed no redemption? Well, there's nobody under the law that didn't need redemption because the law made everybody guilty in the whole world. That's why Jesus died for everybody. Okay, and um, I think he rounds off now. I hope so. Why would Brother Paul use the word those under the law as the people Christ came to redeem? Well, those under the law, Jewish people specifically. But again, by implication, when people under Gentiles reject the gospel, they bring themselves under the law too. Because the law is for the unbeliever, the person that does not believe the gospel. The calls are 30 minutes away, uh, excuse me, 30 seconds away, but I just dashed to Abuja where David is waiting. Thank you, Dr. Damina, for your labor in word and doctrine. Please explain why the sons of Noah were not necessarily saved, even though they were in the ark. Similarly, with the children of Israel, who were saved from the destroyer in Egypt. But you said not all of them were saved. Thank you. Yeah, because salvation has to be by a man accepting the message and believing the message. There's a limit to which somebody can carry you for some time. A time ultimately must come where you have to make the choice of receiving Christ. Moses bore them on eagle's wing for some time. But when he left them to make their choice, they rejected Christ. Same thing with Noah's children. So salvation, the way it is to us today is the way it has always been. The gospel is preached and a man must accept the message, believe the message for that man to be saved. Nobody gets saved for you. You ultimately have to get saved for yourself. 
out of Abuja, we're going outside the country in a moment because out of Abuja, out of Nigeria, but this caller is on the line. Hello. Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, now. sir. Good evening, ma'am. And good evening, Papa. Bless you. Good evening. I want to thank you, Papa. Your teaching has been, in fact, it has inspired me. Papa, I want to ask this question. What's your name? You know, my name is Miracle You're Abundance, from... and I'm calling from Port Harcourt. Okay. okay, go ahead, Miracle. I want to ask this question. Number one, my, my husband is a pastor and he just started his own ministry. But um, to my greatest surprise, the day he started, we've been doing it in the house. Uh, somebody, a pastor came and was telling him he has to do, um, is it uh, ordination or what did they call it? Go ahead, go ahead. I want to, uh, what do they call that in uh, inauguration? So, okay. Papa, I want to find out, is inauguration compulsory for a church that is just beginning? No, it's not. Then, number two, I want to find out, is it most that one might, must have a spiritual father who you will be submitting to? Then, my third question is this. I want to find out, must somebody, as, in, as a church, the first fruits you got from that church, must you go and sow it out to somebody who you as in who wants you to be the spiritual father? Hmm. Well, first of all, let me answer you quickly. Inauguration of a ministry is not compulsory at all. You can start a ministry unceremonially. Just gather people in your room, gather them in a hall, just pray and teach them the word of God. From Bible study, the work begins to grow. That's it. There's no big deal. I, I, I thought you meant ordination. Is that what it meant? I think she said inauguration. Inauguration, yes, uh, of the church. Uh, but can, need... uh, does a pastor need ordination before he can become a pastor? Well, ordination is just public acknowledgement of his ministry. You know, other ministers coming together whom he believes in and submits to, to say we recognize your calling, we recognize what you're doing, and we separate you to fulfill the ministry. Yeah, the like it one... was in Acts chapter 13 with Paul and Barnabas. Okay, our second question was about... Um... Our second question now was about uh, if if a man of God must spiritual have a father. spiritual father. father. Well, yes, you should have a spiritual father because that now makes your members to know that you are accountable to somebody. Mm -hmm. And moreover, before you got into ministry, you must have been taught by somebody. That person who taught you, built doctrine, built ministry out of you, is your spiritual father. You know, so you don't just fall from any nowhere and just do ministry. You must have grown with somebody. That person who taught you doctrine. That person who instructed you becomes your spiritual father. Last question. Must you give your first fruit money to your spiritual father? There's no such scriptural teaching. However, you honor your spiritual father. Okay. Good evening. I'm Obed Amuzu in Ghana. I'm a boy of 15 years and I want to be a man of God. I listen and watch you every day, Baba. Thank you. I know one day I'll be, I'll be like you and spread the true gospel you're teaching. Wow. Amen. You will for sure as you keep learning and growing, you will. Imagine the sure. impact. Oh, the impact I'm is huge. You, it's huge. Okay, so from Ghana, let's um, try to see whether we can um, touch um, Botswana. Greetings from Pondi Kono in Botswana. It's a great joy to be celebrating you today, Mr. Busho. This was about two, three days ago. Yeah. It's been a great pleasure ever since we had you here in the PCI family. 60 Days of Glory has been jubilant with the matchless intercontinental TV radio presenter. More grace, sir. Happy birthday, sir. That's to me. Yes, and now you. to Baba. Dr. Damina, I count all joy of finding liberty and enjoyment of the gospel ever since I sat under your teachings. It's been very sweet for me after experiencing the power of understanding and knowing the word. I appreciate your labor, sir, for it has been an eye-opener. The excitement that bubbles my heart of what Christ used to, to bless my life is unexplainable. I run with this word crazily, like headless chicken. Oh my, I'm fully grateful for you and to you. Thank you, Baba. I love you so much. Glory. Praise God. Thank you. Um, Nelly Shiwe in Suwe to South Africa. Good evening, Global Papa, Mr. Professor Bush. I'm grateful to God for your teachings. My heart is at rest and peace because of the message. So my greatest joy is my friends that have been sharing your messages with have come to full understanding and the veils have been removed from their eyes, just as you always say. Please pray and continue sharing. Glory, after three years of sharing, three of them have finally agreed that your message is true. And now they are the ones who are coming to me and sharing with me how much they are learning from you, sir. We're really equipped to teach others this truth. I will shoot a mail 
for us to be equipped to start Soweto campus. Thank you, Baba. Wow, congratulations in Soweto. I've been to Soweto before, beautiful place. No, but there's no way you haven't been to. <laughs> I'll ask Kola tonight, hello. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, yeah, we have really a fire by you. By your preaching, you have done so well. I just want to say thank you. And may God continue to grant you that good to do more in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for calling. Okay, thank you for calling. The producer has just gesticulated. We have less than three minutes, and I needed to dash out of Africa. So, um, USA, here we come. My name is Semfebwa Godfrey from Chelsea, Boston, Massachusetts, in the United States of America. Papa Damina and Mr. Bush, thank God for you both and the entire ministry saving grace to the blue marble planet papa i know we soon we are soon going to open a campus as i did speak to pastor matthew but for now i'm requesting from you to help me direct all the believers who study your teachings if they have no place to fellowship as we have learned from you we can come together to in my place in chelsea boston until the campus is established i want to thank god baba because um, uh, you have made us students and serious students be blessed and goes on to drop his uh, email address there. All right, great. Those of you in that area of the, of the United States of America, if you're following our teachings, send us a mail so we make sure that you have a campus in that part of the USA. Um, Baba, I think we should leave it here. We should leave it here because the producer says so. Mm -hmm. um, at least we've tried. Um, yeah, we've gone a number of places. We've moved some places. Okay, Baba, we can just dash to the UK. This one is short. Elizabeth is in the UK, says, God bless you. Uh, uh, Baba, please, can you explain why wearing hair tie is unnecessary for women during prayer? Unnecessary uh, because it does not add to anything. God looks at the heart. The reason why you put on scarf or whatever is just to make your dressing. That's what it is. It doesn't change anything at all. God looks at your heart. That's we need to go. We need to go, Baba, from the studios in Uyo, Nigeria. Cameraman, studio hands, studio engineers, everyone joins me, Michael Bush to bring on Papa for the last time tonight. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush, what a blessing tonight. Always a joy. The time just keeps flying, man. I don't know. I don't know what, don't know. what this time is doing to us. Know. But guys, you know, we love you. We look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Share with other people. Bring more people to be part of what we're doing as we flood the earth with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. We love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And until tomorrow, be blessed.